Hello guys, this is Todd with uh, Backcountry History here. I want to tell you guys about uh, a little bit of history, local history to uh, South Carolina, uh, seeing as I can't go out into the backcountry and uh, do some camping. So today we're talking about the Yemisee War, uh, which is a very interesting colonial uh, war, 1715 to 1717. This war ravaged in uh, the South Carolina uh, colony and uh, between various uh, Native American groups and South Carolina. Very interesting, nearly drove South Carolina to the brink. Um, but as we'll see, and as you know, today we survived. A little bit of background. Uh, the Yemsi War was a byproduct, a, a continuance of the Tuscarora War, which was a roar, war with the Tuscarora people, which were a subset of the Creek. Creek, sort of an Iroquois-speaking tribe, sort of into the uh, northern... Uh, and more mountainous regions in the interior of the continent. That was a precursor for a number of reasons. Um, the allies of South Carolina at the time were actually the Yemisee, the Catawba, the Cherokee, number of different tribes and nations thereof. They went from allies of the South Carolinians to enemies over you know, about a five-year period. Now, what caused this? Well, the British uh, at the time traded a lot with their allies, of course. Uh, uh, you've got different trade goods, muskets, ammo, that sort of stuff, which came to uh, you know make the British regret those trades um, during the war. But, you know, everything from pots to knives to you name it if it could be made in uh, Britain you know the the various tools of survival that were made out of metal instead of stone they were sold to the uh, or, or traded um, to the uh, natives um, well this caused a lot of indebtedness to the different tribes, different peoples, uh, definitely the embassy were heavily indebted to the traders because the traders would come, they would say, hey, here's this shiny new axe. Uh, oh, don't worry about paying for it right now. Just, you know, whenever, when you're able to, uh, you know, you owe me X amount, heavily inflated. Um, this created a lot of resentment, of course, uh, but also uh, the fact that uh, as South Carolina was expanding and growing, as, as new colonists were coming over from Britain, and they were realizing, wow, the low country of South Carolina is fantastic for growing a very profitable crop, which is rice. They figured, well, it's time to expand. Now, the, the uh, Yemisee were on the southern uh borders of the South Carolinian colony, Ch uh, Charlestown being sort of the main landing point for the entire colony. About uh, uh, 75 miles south of there, the Yemisee, um, you know, sort of heartland started, where, where the Yemisee were, um, uh, you know, so the border between the settlers and the Yemisee, um, lands were um, starting. And that then, of course, continued into the interior. Well, those settlers wanted to expand into those rich uh, low country, basically swamps and, and plantation areas. That created another point of tension. The other thing was settlers, when they moved into an area, well, they love hunting, loving, you know, basically, uh, you know, eating the deer because it's easy food. So over hunting of the deer caused a lot of tension uh, there as well. So a lot of um, tension created a lot of 
war grumblings that came to the attention of the governor uh, and, and the uh, Lord's proprietors uh, that uh, governed South Carolina, the colony of South Carolina at the time. General, uh, or excuse me, not general, governor, my bad, uh, Charles Craven uh, sent a uh, delegation to a little uh, Yemisee town uh, or little village um, called uh, Poca Taligo, um, which is in modern day, uh, near modern day Yemisee, South Carolina, fittingly. They were sent to try and, you know, sort of reason with them, call for peace, um, try and agree, uh, redress grievances and, um, you know, smooth over, you know, the, the issues that uh, they were facing. Obviously, you know, try and, try and uh, um, address the indebtedness and, um, you know, land rights, especially with the deer uh, over hunting and, and the... Uh, expansion with the Reich's plantations. Well, six men went, um, very important men. Uh, two were sent uh, officially from the uh, Board of Commissioners of the uh, colony, uh, one Samuel Warner and a William Bray. Uh, two men who are very influential uh, in the, um, you know, Indian trading, um, you know, markets, Thomas Nerney, and uh, John Wright, and then two South Carolinians of you know sort of various other backgrounds. Uh, one Seymour Burroughs, and another unnamed man that you know sort of lost to history. Well, they went, they talked, they they tried to uh, talk with the Yemisee peoples. There, there's a long list of. Um, different tribes, and I'll see if I can, uh, you know, do an abridged list here. But they went and talked to try and, you know, stop a repeat war with the Creek. Um, and obviously, the embassy were slightly, you know, different people, but they had war grumblings as well. Talked, went through the night, uh, the, uh, Delegation for South Carolina, um, you know, went to bed or went, went to sleep as, as guests in this village, this, you know, Polka Taligo, and were woken up, unfortunately, halfway through the night uh, as the Yemisi decided that the time was right for war. Immediately, two of those men. Samuel Warner and William Bray, uh, the, the two delegates from the Board of Commissioners were slain uh, in their sleep, rousing uh, alarm in the other four. John Wright uh, was killed uh, shortly thereafter. Thomas Nerney was um, taken prisoner uh, and, well, we'll get to that in a second, but Seymour Burroughs, a very important man in this story, he got shot twice, but he was able to escape into the night and run for his life to Port Royal, or in the, the vicinity there of the plantation uh, around there. And he raised the alarm, and that'll be very important as the story goes on. But... That unnamed South Carolina man, who was able to escape, uh, as, as far as we've been able to tell, was able to hide in the bushes, and they, he watched the, as far as his description goes, a ceremonial torture to death of Thomas Nerney. Um, not a pleasant start to a war, but that was the start of the hostilities on Good Friday of 1715. Morning of April 15th, Good Friday, 1715, uh, Samuel Burroughs runs through the night. He 
uh, raise hue and cry in Port Royal. The citizens of Port Royal, uh, which is about 50 miles south of uh, Charleston, um, if you know where Hilton Head is, it's just north of Hilton Head um, Island. Well, hue and cry is raised there, um, and the Yemisi do not rest on their laurels, uh, killing those four men. They raise two war parties very quickly and send one to Port Royal, where they find a um, ready force of uh, men, and mostly uh, the citizens who are aware of this flee onto various uh, vessels, whether trading catches, which are in the uh, um, bay, or canoes, and hightail it out of there to Charlestown. The other war party got sent to, or well, got sent is, is a pretty grandiose term. There was no core leadership, not like in South Carolina where militias got sent places. Um, the embassy pretty much were a loose conglomeration of tribes. They went where they pleased and raided and killed. The second one, second war party went to St. Bartholomew's parish um, and burned, pillaged, raided and effectively and, and in the end killed over a hundred settlers. Um, you know, uh, basically after, after uh, people have been able to flee, anyone who's straggling um, or, or killed. So after the first week, the South Carolina, well, after that, that uh, after Samuel Burroughs gets the word that war is on with the embassy, um, South Carolina uh, you know, levies its militia under the leadership of Governor Charles Craven. Now, Charles Craven doesn't have much to work with. Um, he raises 240 men um, in the militia, including just you know regular, regular militia and militia officers. And they go to intercept um, these war parties of the embassy. They, uh, the embassy realizing, okay, you know, the, this is on, um, they uh, converge and meet up in um, a town uh, outside of Salkechi, uh, or Salkechi is the uh, more Indian um, name of it. Uh, on a tributary to the Savannah River. Now, the battle is uh, pitched on an open battlefield, which is advantageous to the British, um, you know, even the militia. They, they were trained to fight on a pitched battlefield, um, fast volleys of uh, shot and very organized, um, you know, uh, musket fire. Whereas the outnumbering, uh, the, the uh, Yamasee war parties had combined somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 to 600 men. Sort of, you know, hard to say based on the various accounts. But 400, 400 to 600 versus 240 does not look very good for the South Carolinians. But they're on that open battlefield. Yamasee are coming straight at them. And uh, they're able to push withering fire at the uh, um, you know native uh, advance. Now the natives try and send a, uh, something like 150 men to outflank the uh, you know, tight block of South Carolina militia, but they are just basically driven back by the, the withering fire of the well placed and well timed. Um, you know, volley shots of the militia. In the end, they, the embassy are driven from the field, completely demoralized. They are on the run. Um, in the end, 24 uh, men from each side are killed, which 10% um, of the 
South Carolina force, and you know, about half of that, you know, maybe five percent uh, of the um, native force are killed. But the effect was very decisive in favor of the South Carolina. They were on the run. The Yangtze were on the run. General or George, or excuse me, the governor. Uh, Craven splits up his uh, troop, or his army at that point, his militia, uh, and sends Alexander McKay um, down, uh, who's a very interesting character as well. We might cover that in another video, him in another video. But he leads south, um, uh, pursuing those stragglers um, to uh, a, a little fortified um, palisade fort. Um, some days later, just just about five days later, they're they're you know hiking through uh, the swampy bush of the Low Country. It takes time to move places. Two hundred about again, all of these are about um, two hundred two hundred Yamasee um, uh, warriors are holed up in this palisaded um, compound. It's, I'm unclear based on the sources that I've read, but, you know, it, it seems like it's just a big old circle with logs, you know, palisade. Um, Alexander McKay takes his troops, lines them on sort of a uh, natural exit for this uh, uh, encampment and sends 20 men under two sorties um, over the palisades and into the... Um, uh, in, into this little fort that the Yamasee have created and uh, cause enough panic and, and um, uh, chaos that drives out most of those um, uh, men out of the fort. Um, Alexander McKay with those 100 uh, soldiers have a firing line on that um, uh, escape routes and basically just decimate the um, fleeing forces. Exact casualty numbers are unclear, but, you know, pretty much route the Yamasee. And, and after that battle, um, you know, besides a couple of small skirmishes, like uh, the Dalfuski, or Dalfuski fight, uh, and where a, a crew of a scout boat um, you know, rock up a, a creek and um, after, you know, the end of it, uh, they're, you know, kill 35 of the Yamasee, suffering only one casualty and other little skirmishes like that. The Yamasee eff effectively lose their uh, will for the war. <coughs> They lose their will for the war. Um, they're eventually driven down to the south uh, to the uh, Altamaha River um, in present-day Georgia, and that you know moving that pushing them back effectively um, gives way for the creation of Savannah and the Georgian colony. The Yamasee are not the only um, you know, belligerents in this. And, and to list in the belligerents would take, you know, probably uh, multiple weeks and, and a PhD. But um, the after the fighting uh, that pushed the Yamasee back, the Catawba, who, was an, who were another um, ally of the South Carolinians in the uh, Tuscarora War, they come and decide, well, you know, maybe this is our time to come raid and maybe push these settlers out of the lands and, and renegotiate uh, terms of their indebtedness. Because, of course, traders went into the Catawba and the Cherokee and all of the native lands around uh, trading. By the way, of the hundred traders, British traders, out in the various um, uh, native uh Lands, whether it's the Yamasee or the uh, Catawba, Cherokee Creek, etc., 
Um, of those 100, 90 are pretty much uh, effectively or, or, or um, immediately killed. Um, you know, just just summarily killed at the beginning of the, the hostilities, which is uh, not a good time to be a traitor. But the Catawba, uh, they, um, with uh, um, the Cherokee, basically launch a raid down uh, into South Carolinian land. Um, May 15th, so a year, or a, a month, excuse me, May 15th, 1715, uh, a year after, or a month after the beginning of hostilities, uh, after the uh, Pocolatigo massacre, as it became known, where, where those four men were killed, um, the uh, Catawba sent 400 warriors, along with 70 Cherokee, down to, uh, you know, basically ambush 90 cavalry um, militia um, under Captain Thomas Barker. And very interesting no to note, they were sent up in, in uh, um, uh, response to the killings of those uh, British traders, and they were led or, or navigated by a freed Native American former slave. Fairly clear conclusion that that former slave had uh, held quite a grudge, which is understandable, and led those 90 cavalry militia into the ambush. 26 of those uh, cavalrymen, including uh, Captain Barker, are killed. Uh, the remaining 65 to 70 uh, flee into the, um, you know, in, into the back country of South Carolina. And the Catawba and Cherokee have unhindered access down into Goose Creek. Um, now, Goose Creek is a very, or was, uh, a very rich uh, and fertile uh, plantation district in the South Carolina colony. Goose Creek now is a sort of outer suburb of Charleston. Uh, back then, you have probably a day or two on a bumpy carriage ride through backcountry to uh, to get there, or be smart about it, you know, uh, float up in a boat. The um, settlers were completely dismayed because they knew uh, about a month ago, month before then, what had happened in Port Royal and St. Bartholomew's Parish, and they were absolutely terrified. So they picked up everything they could, kids, you know, their, their precious silver, whatever they could carry on their wagons or backs in, in, you know, in May where there's lots of rains, and went down to the fortified city of Charlestown. There were two plantations that fortified, uh, or that had fortifications on them. Um, the most notable of that was uh, Benjamin uh, Shankings, Shankins, forgive my pronunciation, uh, but he had a plantation in Goose Creek uh, that had a, a fortified palisade, you know, a little fort uh, that had 30 men in it. Uh, an overwhelming force, you know, some, something like 250. Uh, the, the rest of that 470 uh, warrior force uh, from the Catawba and Cherokee, they had dispersed and were starting looting um, the various plantations in uh, Goose Creek. But about 250, uh, accounts vary, of course, um, you know, rocked up to this uh, fortified uh, plantation or this palisade in this on, on um, uh, Shinkin's uh, plantation and initially said, hey, look, you're outnumbered. Let's talk peace. Um, unfortunately, those men who were understandably quite nervous, the fact that they were so outnumbered, um, let uh, opened up the gates of the palisade and a number of uh, a, l a large number of the Catawba uh, came in under sort of flag of truce 
and then broke that and killed 19 of the um, uh, defend 19 of 30 defenders and and captured and carried away the the remaining uh, 11. Um, so things were looking pretty dire. Uh, you know the the southern um, uh, ports of the uh, colony, Port Royal, were you know basically torched. Uh, the various parishes were looted. Yes, the Yamasee have been pushed back, but at you know heavy cost. The um, northern part, uh, you know, the the um, districts inland from Charleston uh, are pretty much completely defenseless. So it's quite a hairy situation for the the colony at that point. Um, the 470 there there were some losses of course but not you know effectively 450 to 470 um native warriors could have laid siege to charleston and depending on who you uh read could quite easily have taken it or quite possibly rather um very hairy situation well Captain Barker's old um, uh, militia cavalry squadron uh, were still roaming about in uh, the back country of South Carolina. And while Barker had died, um, I, I do not know who took over command after that. I'm sorry. Um, but that 70 uh, man militia went in and, and directly attacked the Catawba. Um, uh, towns um, that were left defend undefended effectively by the warriors that went to you know, you know raid Goose Creek. Now word of course got to those uh, warriors in Catawba and they were obviously uh, not prepared for such a a uh, um, counterattack. Uh, they were, they were quite um, dis dismayed. Um, so they uh, abandoned you know any pretense of a siege of Charleston. Uh, and go back to their um, towns, and and eventually, um, you know, there's a number of different skirmishes around the towns, and the uh, uh, South Carolina uh, militia from the uh, southern border um, that were had suppressed the Yamasee came up to support. A um, couple of very um, interesting uh, uh, battles took place. In which that core of cavalry basically charged headfirst in melee into the center of the loosely packed, not very disciplined by certainly British or other European standards, and just broke the you know highly outnumbered uh, or the, the the overwhelmingly numbered uh, um, native force, uh, and that spooked the Catawba so much that after approximately a month, um, uh, you know, the first week of uh, July, um, or excuse me, over a month, my, my bad, uh, uh, July 1715, not only did uh, the Catawba people um, go to Virginia and sue for peace with the British, they also decided, okay, let's become allies. I don't want to, don't want to fight you guys anymore. Alrighty, guys. Well, I've been rambling on for too long, so I just wanted to to wrap up a little bit. Uh, obviously, this is a very complicated topic. Um, you know, I the uh, war past the uh, capitulation of the Catawba gets very, very complicated with raids, counter raids, uh, Cherokee Creek, Chick. Chickasaw, all of those various nations, you know, joining in, but nothing uh, on the scale of like a set piece battle like at Salkechi, where 200 versus somewhere in the range of 400, 600, um, you know, men are, are battling it out in, in a very dramatic way. Um, read about it. Uh, I'm going to post some links. Um, in the uh, description, uh, you know, so you can read more about the conclusion of the war. But big takeaways: the 
South Carolina militia are you know deployed for the first time in, in any major uh, action win against out uh, or you know uh, a overwhelming force in a very decisive way that drives the Yamsee to the south of the uh, Alta Maha River in uh, present-day Georgia, paving way for the foundation of Savannah and, of course, Georgia as a colony, uh, which is a very big buffer during the colonial period to Spanish um, Florida and, and the rest of the Spanish Maine. The uh, Catawba, after their capitulation, uh, seed a bunch of land, uh, especially along the coast, to the South Carolina um, colony, and uh, basically secures the entire coastal region for the colony, for the British. Uh, this expands um, the lucrative rice plantations and you know, develops into the whole planter society that um, is so characteristic of um, South Carolina throughout, you know, a lot of its early history. Um, very important, uh, you know, almost destroyed uh, South Carolina and almost, and, and in the end, um, you know, put it on the track and, and laid the foundations for what South Carolina would be come during the uh, um, American um, Revolution and then further on its development into the Civil War. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed this. Obviously, it's a little bit different than me going out into the woods and, and camping. Um, I love history. I want to keep bringing this sort of stuff to you guys. If you hate it, you know, leave a comment. I, I uh, um, you know, uh, I'll take that, but, um, you know, hopefully you guys liked it, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to bringing you guys more, um, so uh, see you on the next video.